Hey everyone, um, thank you so much for being here today for Kirsten's studio tour. Um, I just want to welcome you in. Kirsten is um, an Atlanta-based artist um, living here in Atlanta. Mitchell creates experimental or experiential, excuse me, environments in various mediums, including painting, installation, and performance. Her work has been shown nationally and internationally, including exhibitions in Austria and Italy. Mitchell is a recent Mocha GA Working Artist Project Fellow and has a studio through, obviously, Atlantic Contemporary's program. She has performed within, with the support of the Franklin Furnace Fund in Manhattan, New York, and her work has been featured in Art in America, Art Papers, and Flash Art Magazines. She has attended residencies at Air Serenby um, here in Georgia and abroad for the Premio della, Perform della Performance in Trentino, Italy. Recent uh, solo exhibitions include the Museum of Contemporary Art of Georgia, MOCA, Atlanta Contemporary, and Hathaway Gallery. Collections include Portman Architects, MOCA GA, as well as private collections in the United States and Europe. So uh, without further ado, I will throw it to you, Kirsten. Thank you. Um, so hello. Thank you, Abby. Um, thank you, Atlanta Contemporary. I know that these are very bizarre times to be having these sort of moments, but I think they're super important. And I want to thank you for showing up and um, engaging me and asking me to show up for myself and for my practice and my community. So thanks for that. Um, I am in my studio. And I'm standing in front of two paintings. Um, one is from last fall, and one is an amalgamation of something from two years ago, but was just sort of uh, reconstructed uh, recently, post um, cabin getaway, which I'll get into. So again, this piece and this piece both deal with subjects that I'm very that are, that are common in my practice and I explore in various forms. And immediately, if you follow my work, you will see common themes of the arch. I'm very fascinated with the shape, which is both moon and phallic symbol, um, as well as a, a corridor, a way to pass through. And in this case, I would say breakthrough. So all of the work that I do tends to balance between the body and even like the sexualized form or the sensual form or um, just the presence, the presence of the body in the space. Um, and then also the spiritual aspects that are very much engaging from the body out into the environment around us. So these two pieces, I thought are kind of an interesting conversation piece because they want to sort of dealing with the new form that I am. Um, Entering with playing with gradation um, and density, and then the other one also gradation, but then weaponry or cutting, um, and then how they both are so large that they become backdrops or they become a place for me to physically enter. Like, if I want to go through this, like, I physically can go through it. There's something um, very tactile and very experiential about um, these larger works for me. So I'm, I'm enjoying that process quite a bit. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the hidden rituals behind my work. I don't often talk, I might loosely say the word meditation or spirituality, but I don't typically invite you to it because it's rather personal. I mean, I, my work might even come across as like very sexual at times, but there are these like, these are these very private sort of ritualistic moments that I'm having that I find very streamlined or even formal or humorous ways to invite them to the surface. And so I wanted to talk about the spiritual side of the practice because I think it ties in to one of the most important tools I have, especially through these times, um, especially this week. I mean, this week is a very loaded for everyone and how to navigate chaos and pain and um, uncertainty 
and thoughts of death or thoughts of, of isolation or whatever fear or pain that, that anyone is going through. So part of it for me is a very soft sort of stripping down of visual. When I go into my spiritual place, I don't have a particular denomination. And if I do, it leans towards Buddhism. I'm very much interested in owning the energetic body that is within me and playing with it and also just really understanding it. Um, the gradients for me have become this place for me to shift energy from maybe a lower level energy all the way up through the body and or even shift the way that it makes me feel. So like, so like this movement here is about going from one place to another with intention. So this, these gradients, which have become a bit of a commercial moment for me in my practice, have really been taken quite well. And they've, they've, they've matched me um, on some of my commercial pursuits, which I find really fascinating. But they also are very deeply connected to a very tender, simple practice and intention. And then something like this piece in, is a bit of a, of a way to take that and begin to play in different directions. I, this feels a little more, I want to say gothic, but gothic is not the right word. Um, it, feels, it feels deeper and a little darker, but not necessarily scarier, just a place to, that maybe is referring to those places that I don't always share. So a little deeper, uh, more internal place. And for me, that the deepest internal place is utter blackness, utter nothingness. Nothingness is a very common term that comes up in Buddhism, and it is about sort of obliteration and like turning into dust, right? So all these, all these like structural forms that can be of the material world, but can also be of the egoic world or of the life as we experience through language or through tension or through repeated patterns and so on. So, so a lot of my practice is really even the weird dramatic or confrontational performative work is really about understanding those parts of me and giving a voice for that sort of dissolution or dissolving. So um, and I'm going to just go ahead and segue. Well, I, I, you might have questions about this, and I guess if you do, I can go further into it because I know there's some sort of symbolism here. Um, I did want to say that this piece, I often use weapons as sort of like breakthrough tool to break through surface tension or to break through what I've already thought of um, and find a new way. So it becomes this like symbolism of opening. Um, and I use fire on this one, um, which is a new moment for me with, within the, the, the fine artwork that I do. I, I did do a burn gradient project last year for a commercial project that was kind of fun. Masculine hot. <laughs> So um, anyway, so I want to I want to segue that uh, that language of searching and going deeper into my time in the cabin. So I decided since I didn't have my studio, which is my practice has sort of become my life in so many ways that I I wasn't sure how to deal with being cooped up in a one or two room situation, um, and I had a very generous friend who. Um, opened a uh, door for me to have a rental cabin that would not be rentable during this time. And it was that big canoe um, and it was, it became a residency for me and it became a place for me to feel rather safe. I have a dog and so I could be outside with him and I could actually go on trails and I could be in the woods. Um, not to say there wasn't some real difficulty in being alone especially as spring was breaking and it was time to be with, you know, time to play again. Um, so there was some real challenges in the aloneness and that's what, when I went deeper into my own practice, which is, uh, again, that really deep looking, that uh, just really accepting what is happening and finding a materialized form to surface it. Um, and so I went, to the cabin and to the woods to perhaps do some more work that I had done before that was called Big Deep. 
and it had a pretty strong editorial or fashion taste to it. Um, and I was finding that really sort of trite or I just couldn't connect with it because it was not authentic um, in the climate that we were in. So um, I was trying to figure out what to do. And I went on an essential grocery run and I found an array of colorful plastic tablecloths that were super cheap. And, um, and they were just this way to sort of playfully bring in fashion and or like cloth or sheerness, um, sterility even. I liked this sort of language of being still sterile in the middle of mother nature um, as that, that language that we're having right now with our own safety with nature, like how safe are we with this great unknown? Um, and then it, there was a beautiful globe and I would play with light with it. So it had, it was, a, it gave me a material form to just play with the various emotions and psychologies um, and visions that were sort of coming through me. Um, and then that was also just stroking um, of an intuitive relationship that I felt like I had sort of lost during some of the commercial pursuits. And so it was a, I feel like for me that the isolation and the quarantine just really got me so much more in touch with these other languages that are so, that are why I'm here. I mean, they're why I do, it's why I'm an artist for a living, to get to know those places so much more. Um, and you will be able to find that work um, I'm working with Flux Projects, and we're going to be doing more formal language with that. Definitely some online stuff and uh, maybe ways to bring it out into a collection. So that's in conversation right now. Um, and then also I'll be doing some more works on paper, very similar to what um, was collectible this week, which also, that's great. My piece sold. I'm super excited. Thank you for that. Um, and you can follow any of this new information that's coming out, the um, Flux Project stuff, any new work that's coming out, I'll be posting on Instagram and or my newsletter. And if you don't, if you're not already signed up for my newsletter, it's kirstenmitchell.com. There is a, a under contact, you can sign up for the newsletter. And or follow me on Instagram, I'm, I'm pretty prolific on there. So um, that is my speech. I'm open to questions. Got one question from Arthur Blankenship. Um, have you experienced new opportunities for virtual performance pieces? I'm getting requests, and um, it's it's interesting to know what to do. Right? This to me is actually maybe the first one. You know, like I, I that's one of the reasons I decided to take this um, non office, non desk position is to really own the body in a space under these new guidelines and see what that feels like. Um, and to just go large and maybe not so intimate. I think everyone's so used to seeing everyone in such an such a, uh, intimate facial thing that I found that, I, I don't know, I wanted to like do this, switch it up. Um, and yes, I'm getting approached. I feel like my first one is going to be the Flux Project, which is just sort of filtering that work from the cabin. I want to see what kind of response that, that has. Um, I also feel like intuitively, I already leaned into my piece um, on the studio wall. I was already leaning back into performance this year. I wanted to stimulate that again because it is um, it is... I'm just able to dive deeper with it because some of a lot of times it's so intuitive. Um, it's beyond it's channeling. So it can be beyond the intellect and it can, it can really get emotions through and it can get energy through without it being so stoic, um, like maybe catches you off guard. So, so this is a great, I mean, it's a great time to explore that stuff. If you're making an offer, please let me know. We can talk about it. And one more thing, I have thought about doing some performative videos that are available on my website. And so that's just also something uh, that's sort of buzzing around my thought pattern.
Kirsten, I have a question for you because I think, you know, so much of us in this new Zoom room world, right, that we're all in, like are in a sense performing ourselves, right? Because we are, you know, inviting people into whatever our home or office is. And like, how do you kind of answer that question that we're all in a sense, like creating stages that we're acting on or putting, you know, props or things in the background? Like, is that is that an interesting thing for you to kind of see how people are, quote unquote, showing up performing in these sort of alternate realities or realms? Well, I so I think within the under everything should be the intentions of, of our goal. So whatever the goal is in our life or in the, pla- the current platform, I think that that intention is everything. So whether or not I'm preaching, um, you know, in church this way or whether I am like working through, um, you know, new color patterns or deeper, you know, like we're like the depths beyond what is just sort of floating here on the surface, like whatever those intentions are, I think that they matter and they, they build momentum and they start to come across and I see it happening. I mean, I, I see it in my own life because I know when I check out, I know when I'm not bringing it, that those things fall away. And so um, I think whatever, Whatever the intention is that that one is seeking in these platforms, I still think it's accessible. Granted, I checked out at the cabin. I had I had two dinner parties with my friend in Berlin, um, and we did it via Facebook, and that was really it. Besides that, I really didn't, and that was just a dinner party, just she and I. It wasn't. I didn't really engage the system because I really wanted to dive into that supernatural um, experience. And so now that I'm, I needed that elixir. And so now that I'm here and I'm back in this more formal environment and I'm not really able to go out and connect with my friends at these parties or, you know, or build those blocks out in that real life, you know, eye to eye in that real life form then this becomes that tool and it's, it's virginal for me. Um, It's just beginning for me. That's why I actually asked Abby a little bit of zoom advice. I was like, cause she's like, I mean, you're most of you maybe have been doing it every day and everybody's got their lighting game down and they're they're, they're, they're angry. What's my angle? So it's a little bit new for me. And uh, I'm, I will just do my best to get my languages across. I mean, I think, as I get older, one of the most important things for me is the conduit of me communicating with my audience and my audience showing up for me and me showing up for my audience. That language has softened. It was so different for me 15, 20 years ago when I was definitely so much more confrontational and so much more like a real tension and aggression with the audience, which is great. Most great musicians or artists have, a, have some rage early on or some anger at the system. So as that changes, it's, I'm curious about it. Does that answer your question? (laughs) Yes. Thank you. I love that too. Um, just kind of like throwing a personal anecdote, less of a question in, you know, to think about how this virtual realm for you has, is, is almost sort of like an interesting challenge because I remember having a really great conversation about you with your studio artist program, Um, installation with the two video pieces and and we had such an interesting dialogue about like where to put the chair and and how far away should the audience members sit from the video and what is that experience going to be like and I I really appreciate how thoughtful you are about the physical environment in which your digital content exists but also the relationship between that and the viewer and you're so concerned about you know not just your body in relationship to your work but also the relationship of your body to other people and the environment in which your your work um exists and i think that's kind of an interesting way to sort of you know add conflict almost to this new direction um that we're in as a society because i think that physicality 
and that environmental, you know, one-on-one intimacy that you experience in your performance is not necessarily, you know, quite achievable in the same way in a virtual realm, if that makes any sense. So I think it's kind of interesting to see how maybe this would change or influence your performance in a digital realm. It's to see how you can get that intimacy back um, and that physicality back w- with being, you know, through a computer screen. So, um, yeah, personal anecdote there, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes for you, um, given, given that relationship. Um, I guess I do have another question too, kind of unrelated to that. And it would be, you know, I've also had a lot of conversations with you about um, sort of curation of space as well. You know, your background in fashion and even merchandising. Um, You know, we've talked a lot about how you really think about how objects are placed in the home. I'm curious now that you're back in Atlanta, um, if you've had a deeper dive into that curation of home and and personal space, um, since you've you've been back, have you you know gotten new furniture or rearranged your house or anything like that? How has it impacted your personal space? Yeah, environment is very um, influential to what I'm experiencing on the inside. So I have a I have a continual dialogue with um, arrangement or composition or but again underneath all that is intention. So for me, like. One of the first things I did was clear my studio. I still had a lot of um, energy from that mocha show here coming back. And so one of the first things I did was start to clear some of that out and lift that energy up because it was time. And I had enough distance from it to do that. And then, and then also, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, and I was just born this way. I was, this is what I would do it as a child in my room as a kid. I was just always moving things around and always um, feeding off. I, I mean, it was just having a relationship with the things around you and the way that it makes me feel. And that, I think, that authentic part of me has become just, and I think all those authentic part of me Parts of me have all integrated into this multidisciplinary person, right? That's one of the reasons I give myself all that freedom is because, and I think about this, because, you know, if people master, they would like master painters or like master landscape artists. And I think about what that means for me. And I, I always go back to the idea of energy, if not emotions. I do feel like I'm able to create an emotional um, influence if I want, but energy to me is the bigger part of it, and that has a lot to do with the way that two two things might be positioned with or around each other, and then that also includes the way that I'm experiencing those two things and how then someone else's body might step into my place and experience those things. And so I think with all those distant views, um, all those different layers of materialization or communication, like just become that playground for me. So did I answer the question? I kind of went off on a communication tangent. Hey. No, I love it. Yeah. When I see that I'm a Gemini, it's what we do. (laughs) Yeah, that was great. Um, Wrap up and. Just want to thank everyone for your time. Yeah, thanks. It was great. I really appreciate the time and the um, platform. Thank you. Everyone stay safe and healthy, and uh, we will see you in our galleries soon.